Hi, uh, Guy Grunwald back at the Beijing Fair. We're in a little different area right now. These are gonna be all small uh, Chinese booths. Uh, there's a good customer of mine, very good friend. Um, uh, these are, uh, you, as you can see, you know, just like 15 by 15 booths. And a lot of times, here's actually a, a mink rancher that's actually showing his own skins. This is a Chinese mink rancher. Um, but a lot of these, like uh, right here, this is uh, a fur place. There's nobody even in there, but a couple of them that cater to the Russian markets. And what happens is, is like some of these uh, places will um, just cater to one part of the world. Like uh, European uh, people will go to a certain area because the styles are obviously different for, you know, each area of the world. Um, there's an area up here we'll get to that's all Korean people. And actually, Korea was market was very good this year, and uh, it's actually kind of the busiest place in the place in the fair. Um, just some uh, more coats. This is uh, this is a little more typical of stuff that's all for the kind of for the domestic Chinese market here. Small coats, um, bright colors. Some of it a little more cheaply made. Some of it, you know. Uh, at a price point that you know a person can buy a coat every year you know a lot of it's under a hundred dollars almost all of it actually um a lot of the kind of knockoff canada, canada goose coats as you can see almost everything has a i'll wait for that it's over all of them have a have a brand on the on the side where canada goose puts their brand some of them look almost identical to canada goose here's a few mink coats something you just don't see here anymore um, those are fairly traditional mink coats. There's a blue one, but fairly traditional. Those are short, but even the traditional long mink coat, as I said yesterday, I don't know if it picked it up or not, but it's just something that you just don't even see here. It's just unbelievable from, from six or seven years ago. You know, they even sell keychains um, made out of fur here. Uh, you know, you can, you can buy just about anything there is out of fur. These are, those are actually lamb skins there, maybe some Toscanos. Um, here's some knitted fur. I don't know if you guys have ever seen knitted fur. These are actually long strips and they knit them together, as you can see, make them into coats. These are made into scarves. They're going to chase me out of their booth, so I better keep moving. Um, this is actually the Korean area. These are all Koreans in, in these booths here. Um, all these, uh, yeah, everybody here in this aisle is Korean. These are all places that um, uh, cater to the Korean market and they've been quite busy. They're not quite so busy right now. Um, <clears throat> but they have been, they've been quite busy here. Even still, there's, there's quite a few people here and they've actually, they, I was talking to some of them, they've written some pretty good, pretty good orders. Um, seen a few more things here. Oh boy. I think I might take a pair of these home for myself. We got some <laughs> shoes made out of mink. I don't think she wanted me to pick that up too badly, but, uh, I think we're giving away a hat here so um, that I got at the Beijing Fair, so I'm going to have to buy one of those yet yeah, while I'm here, <clears throat> if you like our video. So like our video and get a chance to and see, like, it's amazing as you see uh, Western people here um, buying, and the coats look decidedly different uh, from some of the Chinese styles. So, you know, booths cater to, to different... Uh, areas of the world and then obviously you see westerners in uh you know re they're probably retailers from those look like european retailers uh in the booth um there's pillows made out of tibetan lambs more keychains this is mostly cheaper stuff in this area um those coats back there where the westerners were those were a little more high end um here's a guy that's all he's selling is trims he's he's a westerner but he has a factory in, in uh in China, they're using the you know cheaper labor over here to manufacture them. Just, just making these trims out of silver fox and a Chinese raccoon. But you know, if you asked him, he could make it. He would make a, a trim out of anything for you. Maybe they charge you know ten to, to forty dollars depending depending on the item. Um, if you guys have any more uh, questions or anything, you can text them to me um, on this video feed after I quit here, and uh, I'll. Uh, I'll go ahead and answer those. It's only about noon here right now, so I'll be here for a couple more hours. And uh, before I leave, I've uh, done some pretty good business here this week. Um, for the condition of the fur business, for the price of the mink right now, uh, ranch mink, the wild fur is actually moving uh, kind of nicely. So we're, we're pretty happy. Um, it'll uh, hopefully translate into a little higher prices, but it's 
a little difficult to, to move prices with the price of Manx there. You can see some Chinese raccoon, sable, uh, silver fox, uh, Chinese raccoon, all trimmed. There you can see some coats that are lined back there with fur. Um, uh, lining is, is linings are, are huge this year, and the parkas, they're starting to, uh, instead of just lining them with, you know, nylon, they're going to start uh, lining them with fur, so that'll that'll certainly help. They even line them with raccoons, so that'll help the fur business. So anyway, send me your questions, um, and uh, hopefully I can answer them and like our video and you can win a chance at uh, a hat that I'm going to purchase here in a few minutes, so I'll go through and find the coolest one I can. So, all right, hey, thank you very much for uh, joining me.